All right. Hello there. Uh, this is your old buddy, Rich Whitehouse. And uh, today, I really believe I may have outdone myself. <laughs> um, to give you a bit of a summary here, uh, I've implemented Jaguar VR support in my Atari Jaguar emulator, Big PMU. And uh, what that basically means is uh, implementing support for the head tracker. And uh, interestingly, I had to reverse engineer the head tracker protocol from uh, Missile Command VR. Um, it's also in Missile Command 3D, the, the final retail version of Missile Command VR. But basically, um, there were some specifications for both a head tracker and a six degrees of freedom uh, bank switching controller in, I think, a document called something like Jaguar TechRef uh, V10, I want to say. And I don't know where those specs came from, but they had absolutely nothing to do <laughs> with uh, the actual head tracker that was implemented in Missile Command VR, which, as we know, um, is also the protocol used by you know the the uh, prototype hardware still floating around because people have managed to use that hardware with Missile Command VR. Um, but anyway, so I reverse engineered that, um, got that working in the emulator. And there is still an open question as to whether any of the um, prototype hardware that's floating around is capable of stereoscopic rendering. And people have been making um, some perhaps faulty assumptions that it is not uh, based on, you know, oh, well, it would have been hard to do at the time. No, it wouldn't. Sega VR did it uh, <laughs> with much more limited hardware. Uh, or, you know, it, it was not actually implemented in the software Missile Command VR or Missile Command 3D. Uh, but I did see um, some potential bits that could be used for something like stereo synchronization as it was reverse engineering uh, that protocol and noted explicitly that some bits were discarded by the GPU code that was parsing um, the input from the head tracker. So, you know, that could mean a number of things. It could mean nothing. But... It, you know, it's worth mentioning, and it, it could be an indication, but of course the, the best thing to do would just be to get hold of the hardware and um, crack it open, take a look at what's in it, see what it's capable of, and uh, especially see if there was any kind of stereoscopic rendering uh, synchronization mechanism in there. But um, either way, I, uh, I wrote stereoscopic rendering support into Missile Command 3D, which... <laughs> <laughs> which is a bit of a crazy feat considering, uh, at least as far as I know, there's no source code for Missile Command 3D out there. Um, if somebody's sitting on it and not telling me, uh, damn you to hell. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, I managed to do it, you know, reverse engineered quite a good chunk of Missile Command 3D and figured out, you know, how the rendering loop works and how GPU programs are chained together and how the camera transform data works and all that. And I was able to basically implement it from scratch. And the way that it is implemented is very much um, the way that Sega VR works. And uh, if you aren't familiar with my Sega VR work, I did something very similar. Um, a game called Nuclear Rush was discovered some years ago, and it actually did implement um, both the head tracker and stereoscopic rendering with some prototype hardware. So I was able to reverse engineer that software and figure out how the Sega VR headset worked um, generally in its entirety based on that and I was then able to implement that and uh, hook that up to a modern headset to you know get proper stereoscopic rendering and head tracking and all that and that's basically what I've done here and I have stayed faithful um, to the way that I think Jaguar VR would have implemented stereoscopic rendering so in other words it is scanning out um, left and not left and right iframes at 60 hertz, so 30 hertz per eye, and um, the emulator is, you know, based on which eye is currently being scanned out, it accumulates those eye images and then composites them, and um, there are a, ver a variety of ways that you can visualize those things. I've got some Anaglyph 3D options that I'll be showing later on, um, and of course it also works with modern headsets through uh, OpenVR support. Uh, there is potential to create um, other plugins um, if, you know, for whatever reason somebody needs OpenXR support. So I don't know what the actual difference is in uh, supported head VR headsets and all that, but anyway. 
not 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 entirely important for the time being but without further further ado then uh, let's go ahead and get this headset on here okay so uh, as you can see when it uh, detects a stereo capable scene, the uh, emulator automatically switches into a, uh, a stereo visualization mode. Um, when it's not in a stereo capable scene, it's just basically feeding the headset with uh, a flat image of the screen. Quite a bend here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're we're basically constrained to uh, plus or minus ninety degrees, and that is how the actual Missile Command 3D code is written based on these constraints. And I noticed the constraints actually changed a little bit between Missile Command BR the beta and the final retail Missile Command 3D tracker code, which I thought was rather interesting, uh, but it could just be, you know, haphazard, uh, the dev developers placing the, um, you know, the receiver in some, you know, random orientation and then deciding to tweak numbers based on that, uh, rather than anything especially uh, global or meaningful there. And you will notice um, with the side-by-side -side view, if you'd care to follow along in 3D, so to speak, you can uh, basically make yourself go cross-eyed. <laughs> you know, just focus on that crosshair, go cross-eyed, and you'll find that uh, you are seeing the, the uh, you know, well, assuming your brain and eyes work as uh, as most people's do, <laughs> you'll get to see either the uh, stereoscopic 3D for yourself there. Uh, lost music. All right. He he goes down awfully quickly when you can just stare at him, doesn't he, you know? <laughs> 92% accuracy. De definitely better than my controller average. So anyway, uh, see here. So, let's go ahead and explore some of these VR options while we're at it here. Go into video and VR settings. This is the new VR menu. And so, if you disable VR, what that's actually doing is disabling the uh, the headset and the Open VR plugin and everything. But you'll still get, um, you know, stereoscopic rendering if you have stereoscopic rendering enabled through the Missile Command 3D script. And as you can see, I've got the fil the Anaglyph 3D filter set to none, which is why it was displaying side by side. But there's a whole bunch of different options that we have here. I usually prefer lightness to, you know, minimize, minimize crosstalk with uh, actual 3D glasses, but here's red cyan mode. And uh, the uh, tracker currently I'm actually controlling with an Xbox 360 controller. So you can uh, basically bind anything, a uh, controller or a mouse or whatever, to those analog inputs and uh, control the head tracker that way as well. If you'd like to play uh, Missile Command 3D, you know, kind of like a first person shooter stuck in place. <laughs> Let's see here. So if anybody's watching with some red cyan glasses, Uh, we'll look 3D through those as well. And 
uh, VR lens is kind of an interesting option. I did a very similar thing in my uh, Sega VR emulation. I've got uh, an included fisheye lens, and basically uh, there is a Noasis script included as well that allows you to generate uh, lens geometry from you know any model format that Noasis supports, like FBX or GLTF or whatever. And uh, that can can be an interesting way to uh, maybe approximate the actual geometry um, if we even knew <laughs> if we even knew what the screen inside of a Jaguar VR looked like, we might be able to approximate it uh, like that. And of course, you know, you can change the properties of the image, what it looks like in the headsets. Um, I've got the uh, yaw offset set to negative 90 because my headset center is actually to the right over there uh, normally. And is there anything else I would like to demonstrate here? Um, I think that probably covers it. Um, but I suppose as long as I have you here, let's take a look at um, the actual code for uh, stereoscopic rendering and enabling the head tracker inside of uh, Missile Command 3D Retail here. And one thing I'd like to point out is that it's actually a very short script. So, you know, this little bit of code here enables, you know, not, not just enables, but actually implements from scratch stereoscopic rendering in Missile Command 3D. And the meat of it is really just kind of um, hooking into these various GPU programs, figuring out what's happening and when. And uh, I've got a little bit in here that basically says, okay, uh, we're rendering the uh, second die now, so we're going to skip most of the game logic on this frame and just do uh, the usual clear transform, build a transform list, and render. And that's basically how, you know, we get both eyes synchronized, otherwise you'd have game logic running ahead on one eye, and that would be uh, visually rather jarring. <laughs> and um, an option that I didn't even use there is you can set a focal distance, and if you do that, it will adjust the transform rotation matrix uh, to point each eye at that focal point. Um, generally not necessary, but if you set like a really long focal distance, you know, you may find uh, it helps a bit with the stereo separation, also depending on how, how far uh, apart you set your eyes in uh, world space. And uh, yeah, I mean, that this, this is basically implementing, you know, stereoscopic rendering in a, in a game from scratch. So, um, I think it should be, yeah, for a lot of games, pretty trivial to add stereoscopic rendering support. And that could be a pretty nice feature for, um, you know, something like maybe Tempest 2000 um, or uh, Iron Soldier, a couple that come to mind. So, maybe somebody else would like to do that who isn't me. <laughs> I doubt it, but... You know, I, I might end up doing those things as well at some point. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to upload this video before or after the build, but it should be in close proximity. So um, enjoy the actual stereoscopic rendering support as soon as it's up there.